What's up, everybody? Uh, Rose Battle League Commissioner Pat Barker here. Before we jump into this week's episode, just wanted to hit you guys with some dates we have coming up if you want to come out and see the Rose Battle live. January 18th, uh, we will be at Jam in the Van in Culver City. That's uh, right outside of Los Angeles, kicking off the California Cup Tournament, which we'll be talking about in this episode. Uh, make sure you're following Jam in the Van on Instagram to find out how you can get free tickets to come see it. January 31st, we will be at the Denver Improv for the World Championships, LA versus New York, Scotland versus London, the winners facing off to be the first ever Roast Battle League World Champion. February 11th, we'll be at the Mothership, but you can't get tickets to that because they're sold out. Good news, we'll be back March 3rd. So if you missed the February 11th on sale, um, I don't know if there's tickets still available as I'm recording this. It's on you. Go check that out. If you haven't seen Roast Battle at the Mothership, it's crazy. Special guest judge Dan Soder coming in on March 3rd. And February 28th, we will be making our Seattle debut, going up there on a bit of a scouting mission to see if we can find some great... Uh, you know, new battlers coming out of the Pacific Northwest. That'll be at Nate Jackson Super Funny Comedy Club, February 28th. Uh, make sure you're checking that out for tickets. Follow us on social media at Roast Battle for more details on all of these and more shows coming up. Without further ado, let's get into this week's episode previewing the 2024 California Cup. What's up, everybody? RBL Weekly back on the air. I am the commissioner of the Roast Battle League, Pat Barker, joined as always by the creator of the Roast Battle, Brian Moses. Uh, dressed down this week, huh? I mean, big title, creator. You make me see it. It's like a God complex. Is that not what you did? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm dressed down a little bit because yeah, the comments were kind of frying me about <laughs> my my poncho that I got from a, a Tijuanaan who told me it was a poncho, so yeah. I bought it for the dollar, uh -huh. right? And then they roasted me about my shoes, like these aren't Spontos. I was told by Sponto that they, they, they were, but we were all kind of drunk, so maybe he was just clowning me about them. I don't know everybody, all right? Today I got on a, a Jay Dilla uh, Peanuts type shirt and and something I got from like a Walmart or a Kirkland Signature. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm over the comments now, all right? I love you guys. <laughs> I actually, that? you know, I, I, I read them last week. I, you know, I generally steer clear, but when I saw how you, you showed up, what you were wearing, I was like, oh, I got to dig into these comments. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite one was, uh, you look like you're, you're about to sell fentanyl in MacArthur park. I, was I like, saw that Damn, one. Dude, that was a good one. Whoever dropped that one. Yeah. A plus work. Yeah. We should send them something. Yeah. Like fentanyl. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll meet you in MacArthur park yeah. <laughs> corner of Alvarado and Wilshire. What if we just start doing that? What if our merch is like fentanyl, like Rose Petal brand fentanyl? You are on a quest yeah. to see how quickly into each episode you can get us demonetized and or kicked off the YouTube platform. It's kind of my thing, yeah. I respect that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it takes 30 minutes and they're just like, they watch, but like, nah, you know, I'm like, out the gate, let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You are breaking land speed records every week. Yeah, so our guest this week is Bill Cosby. <laughs> Fuck. It's not really. We can't afford Bill Cosby. Yeah. Yeah. Bill Cosby would be, that would be an interesting battle. It really, with who? Hannibal Burris. Oh, I thought you meant like the women. Anyway, let's just, uh, wow. let's get into the battles. Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> let's jump into it. Let's talk dates real quick before we, uh, before we, we continue moving. Uh, tickets are now on sale March 3rd at the Comedy Mothership. By the time you see this, they might already be gone. Can't hurt to check though. Jump online and, uh, and look for those. The April uh, on sale, keep an eye out for that one. The championship January 31st at the Denver Improv. We locked down some special secret guest judges that we're not allowed to talk about. We're not allowed to talk about. Yes. Yeah, their names run with Bilar. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Seattle. Nate Jackson's Super Funny Comedy Club. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Wednesday, February 27th. Nate Jackson's Super Funny Comedy Club in Seattle. We're checking out Seattle. We're doing the, the whole Johnny Battleseed thing and scouting the area. Uh, we've got some battles lined up that are pretty fun. And that is a, it's a new club for us. February 27th, Nate Jackson's Super Funny Comedy Club in the Seattle-Tacoma area. Um, I thought it was February 29th. I'm checking it right now. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know. Every Tuesday in the belly room, uh, this is this is airing on a Tuesday. By the time you guys see this, I will be preparing for my first original uh, belly room battle in uh, since pre-pandemic. Wow. I closed it out against Nicole Buchanan, the last battle before the pandemic. It's been almost four years. That's almost four years. Since though. I went in. The, I, I did a couple of like rematches using some old jokes, you know, last minute 
people didn't show up, had to step in, you know, whatever. But this is the first one uh, I'm, I'm writing brand new jokes for. This is exciting. I'm, uh, I'm excited about that one. Also, my phone froze. So February 27th or 29th, I don't know. Um, Let me figure it out, Pat. All right. This, this is insane. I've literally never had my phone just freeze like this. We're, we're leaving all this in, by the way. We're not editing shit. It's February 28th. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. No, it's not. It really is, is it really February 28th? It's Wednesday, February 28th. It's not 27th <sighs> or 29th at all. Wednesday, yeah. February 28th. We will be in Seattle uh, at Nate Jackson's Comedy Club. Um, yeah, come out to see that. More dates to come. There you go. Um, all right, let's just jump into battles, man. Hell this yeah. podcast is all over the goddamn place. It's uh, completely off the rails. Um, and what better place to start with uh, with that tease than with uh, one of the most off the rails battles we've ever had? Let me let me actually back up real quick and, and tell people what we're doing this week because we always have a theme. We don't want to just jump right into it. In addition to the world championship coming up, we're launching. Um, we're getting into the 2024 season. Um, and I thought one cool thing to do as we sort of get into that would be to put together a, a separate tournament um, for our best battlers in California because okay. the California scene has expanded. It used to be just here in L.A. Of course, Roast Battle Bay Area uh, is doing their thing up in, uh, in San Francisco and Sacramento. And we've adopted sort of like a minor league city down in San Diego. We're down there. That's another date. February 7th, I believe, we'll be back down there. Um, <sighs> What, did you say that already? No, I just love that you're just tossing out dates now. It's, my, it's badass. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's chaos. Um, <laughs> but what we wanted to do, because we, we've, I, you know, we go on these like scouting missions and I've seen some of the best battlers from San Diego. I said, let's get a few of them, a few of the best guys from San Francisco and the Bay uh, and bring them down to LA at Jam in the Van. Jam in the Van is going to be an important part of this show this year. If you guys watch this show, you know, you don't see those battles often because they, uh, we had an agreement before where they would take them, take three months to chop them up. You wouldn't see them uh, f- until you forgot that they happened. Now we have access to that footage. We're releasing the full Jam in the Van specials on our Roast Battle YouTube channel. Um, but as a result, we haven't seen a lot of the best battles from that venue here. So we are going to look at some of those battles today featuring some of the uh, competitors in the California Cup tournament, which kicks off January 18th at Jam in the Van. Another date for you guys. There it is, baby. January 18th, Jam in the Van. The first round, the first, uh, I guess, heat of the California Cup 2024. Yeah, San Diego, L.A., SoCal, NorCal. It's all fun, man. This is exciting stuff. We are we are, we are expanding. Uh, you won't just see L.A. battlers that you get to see in the belly room that you guys comment on every week. Uh, the San Diego scene is kind of uh, blowing up, and also the Bay Area. I mean, they have... Uh, I mean, household names at this point, Lexi, Lexi Actionelli, David Rodriguez, uh, Josh Means, Morgan Anderson, uh, Mr. Footloose, Logan, Logan Farr. Logan right? Farr, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So and some of them are going to be in this tournament. Before the episode ends, we will reveal the entire bracket. We'll kind of go over that, talk about who, uh, who are the people to watch out for in that. But to start, let's just look at some of the competitors. Now, perhaps there is no battler more polarizing in the world right now than Los Digits. The Digits. The Digits. Um, If you know anything about Roast Battle, you've seen this guy and you likely love him or hate him. Uh, There are many people who are kind of in the middle on Digits. Um, He's a big hit live in the room. He's a big target in the comment section. Uh, but his battles are, are, are always entertaining. And this one uh, that we're going to start with went a little bit viral. I believe six, six or seven million views on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Clips of this battle. This was a great one. Uh, Mexican on Mexican violence. Los Digits, who will be in the California Cup going up against uh, a roast battle legend in my mind, uh, Greg Roquet. Yes, social handicap versus physical handicap. This is fun. This one did go viral. Uh, these are a couple of foods gone wild. Let's see a uh, a blood in, blood out versus a crip. I love it. Let's get into it. This is Greg. Are we ready? Let's go! Hey, yo. Greg supports Trump, but it's fucked up because Trump will never support him back because half of them is made in China. <laughs> so Digits is a battle rapper, and he comes from a long line of rappers. His mom was a tamale rapper. His grandma was a tamale rapper. <laughs> The only one in his family who didn't wrap it up was his dad. Yeah, he did, fool. It broke. <laughs> Speaking of 
speaking of broke. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for John Leglezamo. <laughs> yeah. Greg is not a wet bag. He's a broke bag. Mm. Yo, this motherfucker, when he was a kid, he didn't identify as a real Mexican. Only because he couldn't relate to the signs by the border doing this. Classic. Digit's mom was in labor for a long time. And it's because she had a lot of houses to clean. <laughs> With a bunch of people that share Greg's disabilities, it's safe to say that he'll never walk alone. But his wife for sure will. <laughs> So, uh, you know, believe it or not, Digits and I actually have something in common. He's been to jail, and I studied writing, so we've both done a lot of essays. I don't get school jokes, dog. <laughs> uh, yo, now Greg is a ladies' man. He hangs around a bunch of hot women, but some of them call him a friend with benefits. That's only because he gets a paycheck from the government every once a month. Disability, baby. <laughs> Digits, you're the one on disability, let's be honest. EBT is not a disability, fool. <laughs> it's a learning curve, dog. Digits looks like he lost his virginity to a nightstick. Uh, <laughs> but, to be, but, but to be honest, Digits doesn't get any pussy. In fact, Digits is such a lonely cholo, every night he jerks into knee-high socks. <laughs> If you guys didn't know, Greg is a writer, right? He wrote a screenplay called Apartment Fire, which is one of his biggest fears. Yo, Greg. <laughs> Hold on. Yo, yo, Greg. What's, what's your next movie called, fool? Down the Stairs? <laughs> Did you just... You failed as a battle rapper, and you're failing as a comedian. Your hopes and dreams are so dead, your homies want to airbrush them on a t-shirt. Keep it going, folks. Close digits. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. That was probably Digit's best written battle yeah. uh, because it was very, I guess, near and dear to his heart because it was very uh, La Raza centric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I said that right. He always steps it up. Same with uh, when he battled Gabriel Alviso. Right. Um, he loves battling Mexican battlers. I, I, I love those uh, sort of mirror matches. I feel like, you know, me versus Keith Carey was like the Super Bowl of fat jokes. Okay. <laughs> and this was kind of like the Super Bowl of Mexican jokes. You know, when you can get them in, it, it, neither one has to overthink it. Like, you don't have to go in like, oh, I better not make any Mexican jokes. Like, just yeah. lean into it. Give us 10 of them. Right. Nobody's offended because obviously they are of that ethnicity. So it was very, and of that nationality. So it was very fun to see that. Like, everybody's, this is all, hey, we're all consenting here. Let's get into it. And they, they did not let up. They gave us exactly what we wanted. Dude, Greg, Greg is a monster. And there's something about Greg that, and I'm having a hard time figuring it out. Greg is one of the most translatable battlers. And what I mean by that is there's a reaction to these battles in the room and then there's a reaction to them on video. And for the longest time, we only existed in the room, right? And now we're, we're doing the YouTube thing and people are seeing them. And we talked about this with uh, Divya versus Jake from The Mothership, where something seems so different in the room than how it does on video. If I remember right, I think Digit's got the win in that battle. I think he did. He was, I mean, like, yeah, obviously watching back, like, Greg probably had the better written jokes and probably like some of like the harder crosses, mm -hmm. right, when it comes to like the, the punches of the jokes. But Digis was pretty consistent in that. He was, not to take anything away from him. What I'm saying about Greg, though, is he his performance is elevated on cam. Right. Same thing when he battled in Tokyo. You know, I, I was there, like, in the room. It felt like he did good, and then we watched it back on the podcast, and I'm like, oh, god damn, he, he killed this shit. Right. He killed it. And it's also like, Greg can't do act-outs. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, like, so it is just like, it's, it is a joke writer showcase to the upteenth because... He can't do anything else but do that for the most part, right? Joe Urell, uh, Danielle. Perez. 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 Sorry, Danielle. Jeez. Uh, when you, by the way, when you said translator, <laughs> I was like, pause, because I was like, are you saying Greg is transitioning to an escalator? <laughs> That's a digits joke, everybody. That I just yeah, wrote for digits. Yeah, digits is kicking himself right now that he did not write that joke. 
This guy's this a translator. <laughs> Not that he he knows Spanish and English. It's, no, I'm kidding. Anyway. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> that's so good. To an escalator. I I, I love how uh, if you say the dumbest thing that comes to your mind, you accidentally write a fire digits joke. Oh, that's, that's so mean. I hope he doesn't watch this. I I, I hope he I hope he does because this is uh I mean it's honestly like one of his best battles. I know he gets hated on a lot, but yeah. there's something that he brings to the table that nobody else brings to the table. Yeah, and he loves this sport. He does. That's maybe my favorite thing about him. Um, you know, sometimes it's overbearing for 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 me because he's just like, I want to battle every week. I want to battle everybody on earth. I want to go to every city that has a battle. By the way, which is just a front because he just wants to go sell cocaine or do cocaine in, in every city or battle or city in America. It, fair. Yeah. It's called multitasking. Like, you can do both. <laughs> right. I don't want to fuck up his money stream. My bad. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, if you want to go battle in Barcelona and, like, move some bricks while you're there, I'm not. Who am I hey. to say no? Right? <laughs> By the way, I do love that he's wearing an Alec Engel show. Oh, uh, Schult. Uh, jersey. Yeah. Because Engel is a, uh, he's a dolphin now. He's been a dolphin for, like, two seasons. That's. <laughs> <laughs> he's been a Raider forever. Yeah. He's a Raider in Oakland, I think. I mean, I I I don't want to judge a book by its cover. I don't think Digits has New Jersey kind of money. You know what I'm Whoa, saying? Oh, I just said he was... I think the jerseys that he has are the jerseys that he'll have. I literally said he was drug muling, and now you're saying he doesn't have money. Well, I think there's a contradiction there. Well, one of us is right. right. <laughs> I think it's also possible that he sells drugs, but he's bad at it and doesn't make any money. I could see that. Um, but he will be part of the California Cup. He, Damn right. He, uh, he definitely... He's been on a little streak. He's won his last couple battles. Uh, you know, he he lives and breathes this shit, and I know nobody is going to go in uh, as hungry as him. Yeah. Um, but he's going to be up against some really, really stiff competition, and we'll be looking at his opponent later in the episode. Um, but for now, let's jump to a battle that has two uh, battlers that will be in the tournament, one from L.A., one from the Bay. This could be a potential finals rematch. Um, and if it's half as good as the battle we're about to see, it's going to be a classic. This is L.A.'s John Luna going up Ooh. against the Bay Area's Lexi Accinelli. Ooh, the favorite. This is, uh, you think she's the favorite? Lexi Accinelli is the favorite to win the California Cup. Okay. We're going to. Calling it out now. I love uh, it. I ESPN love it. ESPN bet. Holler at us. Here it is. Bay, L.A., let's roast. Uh, John's bisexual, so him and his stomach swing both ways. Yep. Everybody give it up for the last living Neanderthal. Okay. <laughs> Lexi's IG bio is aspiring comedian, photographer, actress, and filmmaker. It's cool she just listed her four last sexual partners. <laughs> Thank you, Gorge Lopez. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Boy RD Cups. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like John funny. collects Nike yeah, right? sneakers. And he's suicidal, so even his shoes are telling him to just do it. <laughs> Give it up for the vegan butterface, everyone. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, Lexi's Italian, uh, which makes sense because uh, no man's ever given her an offer she refused, okay? And then if you fuck Lexi, the next day you wake up with a horse in your bed. <laughs> That's a good tag. That's funny, coming from Chode Riso. <laughs> John's mom is a cop, so that explains why his balls are always blue. Uh, Lexi, if you're here, who's giving your brother his sexual awakening? Yeah. <laughs> I think you are. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, Lexi looks a lot like a hippie, but she definitely sounds like the man. Okay. Uh, John is Mexican. And his parents immigrated here so John could grow up with American portion sizes. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Autistic thunder. Yeah, I'm fat, but um, Lexi, I think your nose sticks out a bit farther than my stomach. <laughs> well, you're going to have to donate your shoe collection after you lose your feet to diabetes. Mm. <laughs> He's a mm. head. Yep. Lexi looks like she sho only shops at SSREI. You look like you buy your t-shirts in the tent section at REI. Okay. That's funny. <laughs> Damn, that's, that's good. so good, dude. Oh, man. That, uh... 
Oh, he's flustered. Lexi's like spaghetti because she's Italian, and to see if dinner's ready, you can throw her against the wall. Uh, John played Mr. baseball for 12 years. He was the pitcher's mound. <laughs> <laughs> Lexi's gay and Italian, so she talks and fucks with her hands. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Andre the Grande. <laughs> Thank you, Carpet Munchies. Keep it going for these two. Keep it going. That, that was fun. That was fun, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just throwing punches back and forth. Quick. Um, well written, tight jokes, tagged. Um, yeah, so definitely two people who went to college and are definitely uh, leaning for Palestine. Uh, but that's what that <laughs> felt like. That felt like two very <laughs> well read, smart people. Yeah. Uh, and it was fun. I mean, you got to see all kinds of jokes. That uh, that domestic violence joke was very fun on John's part. Uh, and at one point, you saw like one of her jokes, like you even said during the uh, during the battle. Uh, she hit him so hard he was flustered. Yeah, when she had that, um, the REI uh, flip, the rebuttal, so to speak, like, um, shit like that impresses me so much because it's like, you could you could sit there and I always, before a battle, I'll be like, all right, what are the five things that somebody might hit me on and I'll pre-write rebuttals for that and, you know, come prepared. But there's no way you can sit there and be like, if he hits me with an REI joke... <laughs> I'll say this. Yeah, where am I getting that rebuttal from? Right, right that's what you, I'm saying. You didn't write that. No, that is 100% off the top of the head, and yeah. it was so good that he was absolutely taken aback by that. Like right. that was um, that was a that was that was an insane, insane joke. I actually thought John was a little bit more consistent the whole I way did, through. Honestly, and towards the end, I was like, you know, he didn't let up. Even after he got he got up from that, like I, I'd say he probably got knocked down. But mm -hmm. he got up, like a standing eight count probably, and then like went right back to work. John Luna, I think, is one of the more underrated battlers. Um, My dark horse in this uh, this California Cup. I mean, this this could be a finals rematch, potentially. They're both really, really sound battlers. Lexi Accinelli is like brand new. Mm. Uh, if, you know, the first season of the Roast Battle League, we didn't have a rookie of the year because technically by league standards, everybody was a rookie. We've never Correct. done this before, right? right? But in terms of people who truly just started battling within that time frame, um, she was, in my opinion, far and away, like, the, the top rookie Yo. in the world. So season two, we get a rookie of the year? Yeah, for sure. Yo. For sure. I love this. Yeah, if you, uh, if you didn't battle season one um, and you, you, uh, you step in season two, you're eligible for rookie of the year. Okay. Yeah, Lexi Actionelli, I would say, was probably rookie of the year. I did not know. And Malia Simon, probably like an honorable mention. I just thought she was so good. I, I, I only saw one battle. Yeah. And then all the uh, New York Comedy Club ones she did. Well, Malia's actually been battling for a few years. Never mind. The, you're um, not rookie of the year. I take it all back. Yeah. She's just, uh, but she she's a monster too. Yeah. But Lexi, I think, finished top five in MVP voting. Definitely top 10. I think she was in the top five. She crushed it. But John Luna is a guy that I, I always admire somebody who comes in. Every battle is fun. Every battle is entertaining. He's obviously a huge target, which puts him... I'll say this. If he was an average writer, if he was an average battler, his record would be terrible. Right. Because he's such a big target. He's starting... He's giving every opponent a head start. You know what I mean? If you think about it like a race, you know, his opponent is starting 20 yards ahead of him because they already get to write... Jokes about him being, you know, fat and Mexican. The low hanging fruit yes. is like right there. Like, yeah, like a race, like the white race. Yes, exactly. Yeah, 20 minutes ahead. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or whatever you said. The, right. Yeah, the Aryan race. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't going to get canceled, right? We're going to get monetized. Oh, fully that, monetized. that was, bro, the, the moment you were talking about shipping fentanyl to our fans in the mail. Oh, no, the AI loves that. The algorithm loves fentanyl. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I'd say, like, yeah, John Luna's like a young Keith Carey because he is a big target. Well written. You're right. If he was more of a mid writer, uh, we wouldn't be praising him as much. Yeah, and he um, he 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 rolls with the punches really well. He he's always uh, he's always prepared. Always has really good shit written. I think he could definitely be someone to watch in this tournament. Um, we'll uh, we'll break down his first round matchup when we get to the end of this. But let's uh, let's keep it going now and get to another battle. And uh, you just mentioned him. You just mentioned the man, arguably the best battler in the history of the show. I'm talking about Keith Carey, first ballot Hall of Flamer. This was his, uh, <laughs> it's great. It's going to get you every time, isn't it? 
<laughs> you nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> Shout job. out to Jay Light. Jay Light, uh, that was actually his. Yeah, first ballot hall of fame. I feel like it's not even a compliment. It is. Oh. It absolutely is. And also Keith is bisexual. So, you know, it yeah, yeah. no, I mean, yeah, works on well. every yeah. level. Yeah. Um, and this is him going up against uh, somebody who did not get in on the first ballot, but she will be there someday. Uh, runner up for LA MVP this year. Um, one of the most consistently hilarious battlers in the Roast Battle League on planet Earth. I'm talking about Paige Wesley. I was so excited when I was able to get this battle booked uh, because they're two of my favorites. And again, this is one of those mirror match type of situations. Um, and I, I I was excited to see what they would do, and they lived up to the hype. This is Keith Carey versus Paige Wesley. Here it is. Hey. <laughs> Paige, Keith, who's going first? I'm going first. Ladies first. Let's roast! Keith's full name is Keith Richards Carey because he's both the size and weight of a rolling stone. It's true. I'm the kind of fat where people look at me and go, you're gross. And Paige is the kind of fat where people look at her and go, you're brave. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm fat. Keith, you look like you've got warrants out for hamburglary and Grand Theft Taco. <laughs> Keith is bisexual. He's into girls, gays, and sweet baby rays. <laughs> <laughs> Paige's husband is actually really, really handsome. Uh, and if you think that's crazy, wait till you find out he's not black. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I go home and have sex with a lumberjack. Keith likes to have sex with couples because he can't resist seconds. <laughs> Keith actually lost his tooth during sex one time because he only uses caramel for lube. It's true. I do like having sex with couples. I would fuck you and your husband if we cross streams. It'll kill the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. <laughs> Paige and her Christ. husband just bought a house. It's in Panorama City because the bitch is so fat, even her neighborhood has to be in widescreen. You're so fat, you look like you're storing Chipotle for the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Keith's stepdad actually had a swastika tattooed on his stomach, but he still made Keith swim with a shirt on. Oh. <laughs> Mm. Paige is into body positivity. She works in tech. She hosts a true crime podcast. If you were any more of a basic bitch, you would have a tattoo that says, eat, pray, love, eat, 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 eat. <laughs> Keith's mom is super religious. One time she called a priest to hold him down to pray the gay away. Dude, you're so fat, even your demons won't exercise. Oh. Yes. Oh, Paige yes. told me that dementia runs in her family and that she's worried about going senile one day. And it's really sad to imagine you sitting in a nursing home and your daughter comes in and goes, Mama, it's me, your baby. And you go, you're not my baby. I want my baby. I want my baby back, baby, back, baby, back. <laughs> Keith actually has been shot Silly. at at multiple comedy shows, but in their defense, Ivory is pretty lucrative these days. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, we've made a lot of jokes, but Paige looks great tonight. You look like the Jackie O of Flavortown. That's oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> Paige looks like if ranch dressing had an Aunt Jemima. <laughs> Let's go. And you look like the jester of the court of the Burger King. <laughs> Keep it going, you two. Keep mm. it going. That was great. Uh, well, chef's kiss, you guys. Great, great battle. Um, Keith taking a risk with the, the baby back thing. Right. So it's a 20 something year old jingle that, yeah, <laughs> that nobody on the internet even cares about or knows, but you guys, you fat people, nostalgia. Yeah, Sorry, I didn't mean to well, say you people. It's the, yeah. I mean, number one, is that on my Spotify playlist? Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. But I, I think, I think that's more of a, you're 50 battles in and you're like, I don't know. I want to take some dumb risks. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's a few that you write for the crowd. You're like, Ranch Dressing Aunt Jemima is going to hit. It's right. going to be great. And then all of us, whenever I talk to somebody like a Keith or a Paige who have done so many battles, they're always like, I have this joke that isn't going to work, but it's for me. You know, and I, I really like it. It's like a big stupid risk, and it's probably going to fall flat, and sometimes it does. Yeah. You know? Is, um, that, what, is that what you guys do? Yeah. It's just like one like, oh, this is for me, and I know this is going to bomb, but this is for me. Kind of. But when do you pull that out? Like you can only pull that out if like a crowd is like eating out of the palm of your hands. 
Yeah, I mean, you could pull it out when you're really confident in the other four jokes. Okay. Or you are or do you do it you're just flaming and bomb. You're like, I've already lost these other No, yeah. no, no, no. You, never, you, so you just you save that then. Yeah, you know and you put it in the two or the four spot. One, three, and five are the most important spots for the good jokes. You want to start okay. strong, end right. strong. You can't lose momentum kind of in the middle, but two and four are kind of open in my mind for experimental kind of shit. It's like track and field, like like a, almost like anchor. Like yeah. A, you know what I mean? It's yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. your anchor is going to be your fastest, obviously. Your first guy is probably your second fastest guy. The second and whatever, but it's like, yeah, those, those, those first, those first and last, it's almost like a stand up set too. Probably doing your second best joke out the gate. Your last joke, obviously, is your, your closer. Yeah. And everything else is kind of like, I'm just trying to get to this closer. Or or like how you structure an album. You know, I, I mean, I, I, I don't even know if people do albums anymore. I'm not talking about comedy. I'm talking about like a, like a music album. Right. Like if you look at like the history of albums, like the, the singles are always in like strategic spots. Correct. Like nobody opens with their four best singles and then has 14 songs of like, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you put one in the four spot and one in the eight spot. It's a baseball lineup. It's any metaphor you want to use. Right. You know, you got to think about where you want to put that shit. So Keith was really smart in that. I'm not going to close with this big, dumb thing. I'm putting it in the four spot. And even if it kind of doesn't hit, I got uh, Ranch Dressing Aunt Jemima coming up fifth. Right. I'm, I'm going to hit, and they're going to forget that I even did that thing. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they review it on a podcast, like, you know, a year later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Incredible, incredible battle. Um, the Keith Panorama City joke was, so good. like, uh, unbelievable to me. Jackie O of Flavortown was incredible. Um The thing I love is when somebody's roasting Keith, it's not even the punchlines as much as the setups. Like, sometimes I get lost in, like, Keith once lost a tooth during sex. I'm like, I'm not even hearing what the punchline is because <laughs> yeah. I'm so stuck. How, what, what is it? How did that happen? Obviously, we made a joke, but I want to get the real story. How, right. How does that? I don't know. I mean, like, his mom is also, like, a drug addict, so it's like, you know, like, mama, like, son. You know, they're just <laughs> losing teeth. I guess, man. I just... <laughs> This shit's great. Keith's father had a swastika tattooed on him. Stepfather, like, oh stepfather. Stepfather, true. He doesn't come from Nazis. True. That's, yeah. His mom just has sex with Nazis who have meth. Which let he who does not have a mother like that throw the first stone. That's, <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> when she said Rolling Stone, I was like, oh, our, our UK people are not going to understand what that means because stone is like is like how they, you know, measure uh, weight. Like you're five stone, you're forty five stone. That kind oh, of thing. right, right, yeah. right. It's I, like I thought you, pound. I thought you were gonna say they're not familiar with the Rolling Stones. I'm like, no, dude, no, they're they, from. I mean, they're from I mean, there. I get it. Yeah. yeah, I just saying the stone thing. Got it. Okay. Listen, I'll leave. I should leave. Uh, no, don't leave. Okay. And we need you to stick around and analyze how far Paige Wesley is going to go in the tournament because she will be in it. Right. She is maybe the most uh, sort of accomplished battler in terms of resume in this thing. And her first round matchup is against somebody who uh, is is kind of brand new coming down from San Diego. I love people like Paige who get to a certain point where they could say, no, I'm not going to do this. I only want to battle the top people or whatever. And you hit up Paige, you're like, hey, do you want to do this tournament? And in the first round, go against somebody who is brand new. And she's like, fuck yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's go. Let's jump into it. I, I mean, love it's a that. tournament. She's doing it for bragging rights. She just wants everybody to know like, she's still the baddest. Yeah. Because, I mean, honestly, I did tell Ryan, you know, last episode that, yeah, I voted for Paige. I'm not afraid to tell anybody. Yeah, I will vote for Paige every time. She is a legend. She's yeah. a living legend and actively still battling. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah, we need more people like that. No, legitimately. Uh, with Paige. So wait, hold on. Did you rank this thing? So the the way we uh, the way we did it, we got eight people from LA, eight uh, eight from LA, and then eight from the Bay slash San Diego, four of each. And then what I did was I pulled the matchups randomly. Every first round matchup is LA versus another place. Okay. And I pulled the matchups randomly. We ended up with some ridiculous matchups out well, of I that. I saw. Yeah. Um, but it was not seated one through sixteen. Okay. I just pulled them, um, which ended up being a really tough draw for for two people. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Two, <laughs> two champions have to face off in the first round. Whoa. Which is really really tough. Whoa. But, um, but yeah, they were they were picked at random, and for Paige, that meant going up against a newer battler from San Diego, and she was like, "Yeah, sure." Okay. Put whoever on the stage with me, and we're we're gonna we're gonna make it happen. So, okay. love that. Love her spirit. Yeah. Uh, love her uh, her attitude. Um, let's now hop over to uh, a battler from the Bay who made his Jam in the Van debut a few months ago and uh, really impressed everybody there. This is a, a guy who's going to be going up against Digits in the first round. A what? major clash of styles. If you uh, if you if you dig Digit style. 
This is a, a complete 180 from that. Let's if you go. don't, uh, you're going to really love what we're about to see. Uh, this is the Bay Area's Deep Tanshu Ja going up against Bear Bado from L.A. Here it is. Who's going first? Let this bitch go first. Fuck it. Bay Area, Los Angeles. Let's roast! Bear's wife is disabled. <laughs> and he's on antidepressants. So just like his wife, his dick cannot stand up. <laughs> Brave of you to talk about my wife's disability, because your wife, your girlfriend actually, she's also disabled, you know, but just temporarily till he replaces the batteries. Thank you, Tiger King. <laughs> You're welcome, Jafar Goldblum. He looks like Tiger King, but Tiger King used to fuck with exotic cats, and he used to fuck a disabled pussy. <laughs> really yeah. good fucking one, deep dog shit. I mean, uh, fucking cheap cum tissue. I don't know, I'm just gonna call you Mark, all right, bitch? Because your name sounds like some board game you get sucked into. <laughs> well, you guys give it up for fucking Mark <laughs> It was a joke, right? joke, for sure. Thank you, inbred Jesus. <laughs> hey, that's my favorite type of bread. Bear's mom just had a brain surgery. She cannot remember Bear anymore. She has never been happier in her life. Jesus. Anytime she starts remembering Bear, she starts banging her head against the wall. No. My family will never be as broken as your English, so fuck. <laughs> Yo, I know you look at fucking Mark here, and he looks most comfortable inside a lab. But if you ask him politely, he'll fuck any dog breed. Thank you, Bear Bidet. Good one, not so hot, Magandhi. <laughs> <laughs> Bear actually gets really sad whenever there's a police brutality. His best friends end up going to jail. <laughs> but he's a nasty guy. Like, he, he's so nasty he cannot come until he hears the N-word. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking smoothly done, sweatshop millionaire. You know, I just had a, an epiphany for a moment. I realized because uh, Charles here, he's got a work visa, which means he is the one that's been stealing our jihabs. <laughs> Bear told me that he's from Louisiana. Yes, and, I did. And, I, and he cannot remember stuff. He has, like, terrible memory. Like, for 15 years of marriage, he couldn't remember that his wife was also his sister. <laughs> I fucking knew that, Sangay Gupta. I bet you're a fucking hoot at parties, you know? Because you look like you start all your stories with, this conversation is being recorded for quality and training purposes. <laughs> Keep it going! Uh, thoughts? I mean, yeah, that was, uh, that was Deep Tanshu's debut in front of us. I gotta say, uh, I forgot how fun that was and how great he is. Uh, yeah. I'll say this to some of the younger joke writers out there who are watching. Uh, be careful with puns. Be careful with word playing puns just because clever is always good. I think Matt Broussard always says this, like, clever is fun. He's like, but you want to go for punches, you know, and, and puns are, they're not, it's, punny is, is, it's funny, but it's also, it's, it's just not as strong as like a, like a solid punchline. I love that. You, can we get into the pun conversation? Yeah. Because I have I have a little bit deeper dive into that Let's of go. something I Please. discovered. So I'm yeah. I'm battling uh, tonight if you watch this on Tuesday against Nate Welch, who we've seen on this podcast before. Um, very very funny guy. Yes, loves puns, loves puns. And I went back in preparation and I watched probably eight of his battles online. Yeah. And I saw the puns and I picked up on a trend that I hate 
not just from him, but from battlers in general, and I saw some of it in this one. Yeah. And I'll single out somebody that two seconds ago, we just got done singing her praises and talking about, about how great she is, so that you know I'm not singling out any individual. Correct. I watch, her, I watch Nate versus Lexi Accinelli. Okay. Um, and they both had these moments where they did these puns. First, he said to her, you look like a mechanic that does essential oil changes. Now, he was going in on, a, she looked like a hippie, right? Correct. He was doing a hippie thing. Yeah. Here's the thing that bugs me. It has to work on both ends. If you are combining, if you're doing this Wheel of Fortune before and after category yeah. style of joke, <laughs> both ends of it have to make sense. It's why one of our uh, most used jokes, American History XXL, right? Correct. There's a reason it works. If your opponent is fat, and looks like a racist. Yes. If they don't meet one of those criteria, it's a bad joke. Correct. And I'm looking at that, and I'm like, I know you wanted to get to essential oils. I understand that, because you're, you're making a hippie joke. But you can't just go essential oil changes and now be like, you look like a mechanic. No, she doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't look like a mechanic. It doesn't make any sense. And then the next joke, she comes back and calls him limp biscuits and gravy. And right. it, it blew the roof off. And I even, as a judge, was like, oh, my God, Limp Biscuits and Gravy. But then you put it under a microscope, and you're like, okay, Biscuits and Gravy, he's fat, he's from the South. Okay, that part works. Limp Biscuit. He doesn't look like Fred Durst. He's not wearing a backwards no, wearing red hat. Cap, no. I guess you could say he's like sort of like a rocker kind of guy. But really, you just wanted to get to the fun pun of Limp Biscuits and Gravy. And it worked. It works. But it's become a pet peeve of mine now that I picked up on it. And, like, you saw it even in this battle where, like, you know, it has to work on both levels. When Bear said, not so Mahatma Gandhi, okay, you're calling him ugly and doing a Gandhi thing, works. Yeah, that works. works on both levels, right. that's fine. But like, and I forget some of the other ones, but this one where you are just doing this wordplay that works 50%, the shit drives me insane. It's lazy, it is. I mean, because you can't do your whole battle like that, and I think, uh, I don't know when, when Bear was scheduled for that. It could have been like a 24-hour battle, so I, I can understand, like, you know, because Bear's a hell of a writer and Bear's a hell of a performer. Um, but I can understand sometimes it's just like getting caught up in the sauce of, oh, that's they're going to love this, they're going to love this. Oh, thank you this, thank you that. Like, and I can maybe like cruise into my third or fourth joke kind of a thing. You know what I mean? And just like as a person who's like, just, just as a voyeur watching it, you're just like, ah, you have better jokes than that. You can come harder with like a cross instead of just jabbing somebody with a pun to death. It's fun to sprinkle that on, but you can't put your whole dish or recipe as just like puns because, you know, we're going to get tired of just like of a, of a clever joke. We want to hear something like harder. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely think so. And like, look, I, like you said, a garnish, yeah. right? You know. It's a low risk, high reward thing because you're saying it. It takes half a second. If it doesn't hit, you're setting up a, another joke. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. So I understand why people gravitate towards the thank you so and so and blah 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 blah. I, I get that. My thing is, I would just ask the writers if you're going to do that, challenge yourself to ask yourself, does this work on both levels? Correct. Because it's just like anybody can get up there and be like, well, this phrase ends with a word. And another phrase starts with the same word, and I'll just mash them together. Like, yeah. Yeah. But does it really make sense, though? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about the mechanic. And I'm like, I mean, I, I can see where he's trying to, like, fit it in where she, I mean, because she does dress, like, with, like, jumpsuits. You know what I mean? So, like, she kind of does look like a, True. you know, a That's hippie fair. who does do, you know, essential oil changes. That's, and and, so and it's not, I'm saying, like, it's, it's not that much of a stretch. That's kind of why it worked. And maybe, maybe this is just me being overly critical and I, I fully recognize that. And the same thing with Limp Biscuits and Gravy. If right. you, if you want to say that he looks like a, a rock, he looks like he would be in a rock band. Okay. Um, I heard the same joke last time we were down at the mothership. Matt Bellick said Limp Biscuits and Gravy to Mike Eaton right. and it blew the roof off. Parallel right. thinking, obviously I'm not right. saying anything. Fupa but, Lipa. That was one of his better <coughs> ones. I like that one, right? Fupa Lipa, but Fupa Lipa is like to Heather and, Keith, I think. Yeah. To Heather Keith, you're you're saying she has a, a fupa and she looks like Dua, Dua Lipa. Lipa, right? Right. Again, just it's got to check both boxes. <laughs> this really, it's a thought that I had that drove me nuts when yeah. I started watching these Nate battles because also, I think Nate's opponents are like, oh, I'm going to play the pun game with him. Yeah. I'm going to go in and sort of like beat him as. So then you get some of the back and forth where it's just like, and meanwhile, Deep Tanshu. The one time he just said, thank you, Tiger King. He didn't try to put any spin on it. Right. 
he was like, I'm just going to straight up call this guy Tiger King. That actually works better for me somehow. Same, by the way, same. Yeah, if you just reference, like, like that's uh, reference is cleaner. It's just like, boom, we can all get it. It, it, it has a, a crowd work feel to it. It's just like, oh, look at this guy. That kind of a thing. Yeah. So like, that does kind of work. You're busting his balls. Right. I prefer that to like forcing in like, thank you, Tiger King Kong. Right. Or what? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. yeah. so, um, yeah. I don't know. It was, it was a pun heavy battle. I thought, uh, deep went, uh, went way harder with his kind of material. Um, I thought that, uh, you know, obviously opening with like his wife is disabled, um, sort of sets a tone for the rest of the battle. Yes. And I do think that's another thing where like, if you're going super hard and your opponent is doing pun, I think the puns stand out even more because it's like, oh, this guy's talking crazy shit about your family. Yes. <laughs> I mean, he, dude, I loved it. I mean, like, it looked like, like Deep Tanshu looks like he should be a doctor, like his family wants him to be. And then Bear looks like somebody who doesn't believe this guy walks in that hits his doctor. Like, that's not my doctor. <laughs> I loved it because Bear just kept going in like, ah, uh, and just like trying to pun him to death. And then Deep just kept coming with just like, well, this is who you are. And it was really fun. De yeah, Deep's, Deep's reaction, his defense is a little bit more solid too. Mm -hmm. I feel like Bear seems like he gets, you know, like worked up, which is part of his character. Yes. Um, but it makes it look like the punches are landing harder. Whereas Deep, it's like, none of this is affecting me at all. Yeah, It was exactly. almost like, I don't even understand the words that you're saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> Neither did we. Yeah, exactly. And one more thing, Bear was so close to having a really good... Uh, recurring theme with calling him like Mark and Charles and yeah. everything like that. Afterwards, I'm like, and I didn't realize it until he did the recorded for customer service thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that should have been the angle. Uh, You're talking about an Indian guy who like, you know, we, we've all heard that joke where it's like, yeah, they, 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 you know, this is Joe or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, that I, I think he could have pulled that one together right. uh, a little bit differently. I, I like where his head was at. Yeah. I, I like the and thought. And again, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't know when, like how much time he had to write this battle because maybe if he had any more time, I think Bear probably would have like strung that together and probably themed it out a little, a little yeah, cleaner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cleaner. Also, Deep Tanshu doesn't sound like Jumanji. I'm sorry. No, I, I yeah, gotta, that part too. I was like, I is that call a Jumanji? That like Deep Tanshu? Like, that's going real redneck. <laughs> <laughs> Bear, I'm like, I get the I get the character, but I'm like, even we lost it. I'm like, I don't even, Jumanji, Deep Tanshu, that is, that's just racist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but a lot of fun. Uh, Digits versus uh, Deep Tanshu is going to be a very, very interesting yes, first round matchup. Yes. Uh, we'll talk about it more just in a little bit. And let's close it out now with, uh, with a really good battle from Jam in the Van that featured... Uh, a tournament California Cup participant winning the undercard title. This is the only time, to my knowledge, that the uh, the title's been defended outside of the belly room. Okay. Uh, this was the current champion at the time, Effie Meadows, defending her belt against uh, a guy who's going to be in the tournament uh, starting on January 18th, J.P. Puthenveedle. Not a guy, not a guy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey, hey don't, don't hit play on that yet. Let me run that back. Uh, J.P. is non-binary. And it was uh, hurtful, what I said. I regret in great detail uh, saying those things. I'm attending uh, training to uh, better myself, and uh, it will not happen again. I greatly regret the error. JP, you are one of the finest humans I've ever met, and uh, I hope there are no hard feelings, okay? Is this coming out after the episode? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to add this after the episode, so it looks like I actually took training. You guys can do that, right? Here it is. Challenger, champion. Are we ready for this? Yeah. Battle! Battle! Effie JP, let's rock! Like a mm. uh, hi, Effie. You look like a GameStop transitioning into a hot topic. Uh, <laughs> Effie's about to lose her favorite member, and by that I mean her wife is leaving her. Uh, she's tried dressing like a man to win her wife back. Kind of reminds me of that movie, Mrs. Doubting Her Transition. Uh. <laughs> Give it up for my opponent, Arthur the Tardvark. <laughs> uh, JP's an autistic virgin. They don't eat pussy, but it's just a texture thing. Uh, <laughs> they would try to have a three-way, but everyone would have to be fucking on their own separate plates. No touching. I, I might not have any pussy, but you don't have a pussy. Uh, <laughs> I get it, though. I don't know how to put this. Uh, Effie, she's about to get a doctor 
have her dick turned inside out. It's very safe. It's the same procedure that was done to her face. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Thank you, Super Mario Other. (laughs) JP's a nerd, but not the smart kind. Uh, The closest he's ever getting to Silicon Valley is when he plays with his flashlight. Mm. You sure talk a lot for a person with only one set of lips. Uh, (laughs) Fun fun fact, Effie was almost the face of the new Bud Light ad campaign, but they realized they needed something way more alcoholic to make her look like a woman. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You look absorbent. JP is non-binary, but they're too much of a coward to ask people to actually gender them correctly. I tell you to fucking hang yourself, but you need a spine in order to break your neck. Jesus Christ! Yeah! Keep it going! Damn, dude, that was... Uh, under, undercard matches are three jokes, and they made the most of those three jokes. I mean, it Holy felt like... Shit. It felt like whatever JP said at the end... Uh, Effie just did not like it, and then when she performed that last joke, I mean, she hit them with everything she had. (laughs) There was a lot of fervor in that last joke towards them. What are your thoughts on when somebody delivers a joke kind of like that, where... It is kind of like aggressive and it's more of like a like a rap battle kind of diss as opposed to a traditional like, oh, you only roast the ones you love and we're all having fun up here. Like, um, I kind of like it as a change of pace once in a while. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> I need, we need to be careful before we talk about this battle. I always forget that, uh, you know, we can't just have. That's why I asked in very general terms. Yeah. I said when a battler, I'm not talking about that joke. Right, right. No, I was just trying to think about, you know. Uh, just because Effie looked like she was doing a lot of push-ups before the battle. Um, no, what do I think about the aggression? I mean, because it is supposed to be fun. Uh, but I think at that last part, because I did kind of see her take, not offense, but just like, oh, I didn't think about that angle. And then she was like, okay, I need to come with something a little heavier. Yeah. And when she came with that, and you really felt it like, God, this guy doesn't have a spine. Jeez. Yeah. You know, so like, I mean, it's, I guess there's, it's a case by case basis. Yeah. I mean, I, I really, I say this kind of shit all the time, but I, I admire people who are willing to take on a more difficult uh, sort of premise. And like with JP, you're doing three jokes that they are autistic. They are a virgin there. There are a million ways you could go over three jokes. And she chose to go after the fact that they don't have the balls to stand up for themselves and correct people who misgender them, which is a very specific and nuanced oh, yeah. thing. And I, I really, really admire going for it that way. And I think that that's, uh, I think that's really uh, creative writing. But it's also, because it's such a good joke and it's a hard joke to, um, to land the dismount, because mm-hmm. it's wordy, right? Yeah. Uh, but you saw it was from her soul. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like it, it's happened to her, so it was an experience. It was almost like I know it. You know, like yeah, I'm from a trailer park kind of a thing. So it was kind of had that effect of that that battle rap thing you're saying. Yeah. It was self deprecating it to a point where look who I am and look who you are. You can't even do what I'm doing. Mm. And I'm doing it better than you. You fucking weakling. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, yeah. I really did appreciate that because yeah. there was a punchline at the end of it. Uh, it may not have been like super funny, but it was like, ooh, ooh. It was just it was just a punchline. I guess that's what I was trying to ask in the beginning. Like, you know, obviously we're all going for laughs up there, but sometimes the ooh is, uh, that counts too. And that's what I'm saying about Rose Battle. It doesn't, it's not so much a comedy show. It's like we're looking for punchlines. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it is a joke writer showcase. So in essence, there that is a punchline of a joke. Uh, but it it's not necessarily you're not a, you're not equating that to laughter in that joke, but you're still like, damn, that's a good punchline. I guess it's just universal. Like that's just a hell of a punchline. Yeah, absolutely. I I, I love writing like that. So yeah. I thought that that was really um uh, uh, gutsy. I was going to say ballsy, yeah. but again, I'm being careful now too. <laughs> I mean, 
JP went for it. I oh, mean, yeah. like, I really like it. It's almost like that Digits and uh, Greg Roquet battle where it's, hey, we're in this community so we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. And then, like, we're allowing you guys to laugh with us. Yes. Not at us. And I really do appreciate battles like that because that is kind of what we're all about. Like, hey, they're consenting. That means we're consenting. They're allowing us to laugh with them. Yeah. And this is kind of what we're trying to, why we're trying to humanize everybody. Yeah. You know, and I think that was a perfect way to do it because when JP had that, like, you're really confident. We're so, well, you're really chatty for what woman with one set of lips. <sighs> I mean, just... Yeah, and the 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 rebuttal on like yeah. I may not have gotten any pussy, but it uh, you don't even have a pussy. I mean, um, yeah, they know what they're doing. Really good. As a, I will also say, as the father to an autistic child, the joke about JP doesn't eat pussy; it's a texture thing. It's oh. <laughs> so I'm not sure people, uh, if you don't have anybody autistic in your life, can yeah. truly appreciate. How insanely funny that joke is! <laughs> um, I just got it. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it is. That's a wild, wild joke. Those are two of my favorite, uh, you know, writers coming up in the yeah. LA scene. I mean, sure. like when, when I, I know it's. I think anybody, you know, would, when they're watching something and then they say like that person's name, like ooh, Chappelle or ooh, Kobe. Like that, I said that with Puthenbeel during that battle. I was like, oh, Puthenbeel. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, that yeah. Was, yeah. Ooh, ooh, I also, yeah, almost misgendered them. Yeah, uh, great, great battle. Uh, Puth and Vidal, uh became the undercard champion in that battle. He has since uh, lost that title to Luke Walls, uh, but he will be uh, moving on to participate and try to become the first ever California Cup champion. Add another piece of hardware to his uh, to his trophy case. Let's take a look at the bracket right now. And we we saw a lot of these uh, these battlers today. There's also some uh, some newer ones that we haven't seen. Uh, you see some of the San Diego people. Uh, top left corner, Mini El Tayeb, uh, just made her belly room debut uh, a couple months back. Had a ridiculous performance. Yeah, she also had like a, a fun one against Matt Eisenberg, right? Eisendraft. Or Eisendraft. Yeah, Eisendraft. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Now, sorry. now she's she's going to be going up against Sarah Fatimi, um, former LA champion. Her first battle since losing the title. Sarah is another one of those battlers who uh, takes the sport very, very seriously and puts a lot into it. I think if we're writing, uh, you know, Vegas lines, I think just due to experience, I think Fatimi would probably have to be a pretty big favorite. One joke over? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good way to put it. I would make her a one joke favorite for sure. Uh, minus one and a half, I guess, if we're, if we're setting I mean, the line. man, yeah. Minnie is fun because she's a student. I mean, like, she used to work at the comedy store in L.A., and then she moved back to uh, San Diego, and now she's kind of taking that scene over by storm. I, that's a good match. Honestly, I'm looking at these matchups. Pat, you did a hell of a job. Thank you. Again, I pulled these at random. These are really, These were really pulled good at matchups. random, and this is another one that, to a degree, is kind of like a mirror match. They're both uh, mm -hmm. Persian women. Um, so you got that angle. They're they're both going to probably be going in on that. Um, I think that one's going to be really good. If I, if I had to guess, I would say that Sarah's going in as the favorite. We move down right. to John Luna against David Rodriguez. David Rodriguez, kind of a last second replacement, was originally supposed to be Logan Farr in this spot, um, but then Logan Farr had to drop out. David is a, an interesting one. I saw him battle up in the Bay at Cobb's. And he crushed it. And then I believe he came down for the last Jam in the Van event. You saw him for the first time, right? Battled, uh, I want to say... Uh, Alyssa Poteet? Alyssa, yeah, Alyssa Poteet. What were your thoughts on, on No, no, David? I think that's a that's a better matchup, honestly. Like, Logan Farr is, is a hell of a performer. David Rodriguez versus John Luna, that's going to feel like uh, another well-written battle. Like, they, they feel like they're in, the, they're in the same kind of class, honestly, when it comes to writing. That's a really good matchup. Uh, I agree. I'm looking forward to that one. I would say, honestly, though, I give I still give John Luna the respect. And I give him a two joke over. Yeah, I would say so. I think yeah, you're you're setting a line. Luna is the odds on favorite, just again due to kind of like the the experience. Um, but David Rodriguez is another guy who I think started basically like a rookie last year. Mm -hmm. He would have been in that same conversation. Right, with Lexi. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's outstanding, so I'm looking forward to that. Next up, we have Elise Golgowski, who has been um, really on a run in L.A. ever since she uh, debuted at the Mothership and had one of the best battles there. Um, she uh, She's killed her last few battles going up against one of the more unknown battlers in the tournament, Taylor Great. Out of San Diego, uh, yeah. Taylor has come up to LA, battled in the belly room a couple times. Um, really represented well for San Diego. 
Um, he's fearless. I like Taylor uh, because he's not afraid to take shots at the judges, take shots at the host. He's 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 always got a joke. Everything kind of kind of rolls off him. He's like six foot seven. He's tall. He's, he looks like Predator. Uh, and Elise looks like the white version of him. So I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. They're very <laughs> tall, skinny, attractive people, and I think that's another mirror matchup. Um, in essence of like, if they were together, they would you know probably be uh, lynched. Yeah, or have the most dominant center in the NBA in the year yeah. 2047. Yeah, or like another Blake Griffin type, yeah. <laughs> like just crazy vert. But yeah, I think uh, Taylor. I like Taylor's a dark horse of mine I like, but at least go Galaxy, you have to give her the, because uh, she's on a run right now and she's really figured it out. I would give her a, a two and a half joke over on that one. Okay, the LA people heavily favored it favored on the left side of the bracket, and now we get to the bottom. We saw both these guys earlier, Digits versus Deep Tanshu Ja. What are your thoughts on this one? That is a, uh, I'm going to give Digits the uh, one joke over on that one. Mm. One joke, that, that's just me. This I is a pick them in my mind. Yeah, this, this, this is a push. This is a push, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this I mean. is an even line. Um, I have no idea what to expect in this one because we talk so much about the mirror matches. This is the opposite. Complete but, style clash. But Digis is so good with ethnic battlers. He is. He's so good with ethnic battlers. I if if he it's something about it's almost like you know like like white battlers are good with with ethnic battlers. I just feel like uh, Digis really has he that that's his that he's in his comfort zone with that. And I think Deep Tanshu because his defense is so good. Yeah. I can't wait to see what he's going to say about Digits and that entire. That entire thing that Digis does. It's gonna be uh <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. Moving over to the right side now. In the top we have Audrey uh A Bear. I don't know uh, okay. if that's how you pronounce it, going up against Evan Warner from LA. Audrey, I don't think we've seen on this podcast yet. Uh she's done a couple battles down in San Diego. Uh that you seem to like her, yeah. Really I, impressed me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I she must have. I, I still don't remember. I remember Minnie, I remember Camille. Yeah. Something about Audrey, I don't I apologize. Well, she's the only one who hasn't come up to LA yet. Okay. That must so, be. So um I she dominated down in San Diego. Um, by far the least amount of sort of LA battling experience of anybody kind of in the tournament. Um and Evan Warner had a really, really solid twenty twenty three. Um, a lot of fun, great joke writer. I think this is another situation where just based on, it's a tough line to set because we haven't seen nearly as much of Audrey, um, but just based on experience, I think Evan probably gets the edge there. Yeah, and she's but she's a woman too, so I mean, usually women do really, really well in this, and you're saying she's been dominant, so yeah, I, I give that, uh, you know, Evan's this two and a half joke over. Okay, two, I mean, two and a half's a lot. Um now this is where uh, this is where two people got kind of fucked by the uh, the randomness of the Damn, process. That's the, a first rounder. This is a first rounder. Jesus. Former LA champion Kelsey Lane Woo. won the most recent tournament we had out here, which was for the number one contender to get a shot at that belt. Then won the belt, beat Omid Singh. Uh, another Hall of Flamer. Mm -hmm. And then Lexi Accinelli, who we've been talking about the whole episode. The She's year. a rookie of the year, current champ up in the Bay Area. Right. Current champ, former champ. Um, this really, they both deserve better than having to do this in the first round. That being said, set a line for me. I That's a, that's a tough one, man. I mean, I don't want to disrespect Kelsey Lane because... Every time you every time you discount Kelsey Lane, especially since twenty twenty three, mm -hmm. uh, late twenty twenty two, she's been on a hell of a run, like a, an Elise Golgowski type run. Yep. Uh, but it was a Kelsey Lane run before that, so I would say, man, let's go, Kelsey. One joke over. That's that's putting respect on her name. That is a uh, that is well deserved. I think that battle is going to be a, a slugfest. Yeah. Looking forward to that one. Uh, on the next one, the longest names of the fry. I could barely even <laughs> read this shit. Uh, JP Puthenvedel, who we just saw going up against Raphael Wolfgang from the Bay Area. Now, this is the one battler in the tournament that I haven't seen. This uh, Raphael Wolfgang comes to me based on a couple things. Number one, his record in the 2023 season. I think he went like five and one or something like that. I saw his name a lot. And then Paige Wesley went up and, and judged the battle a few months ago up in the Bay Area. And she was like, you got to see this Wolfgang kid. Like, he's, okay. he's great. Um, so her opinion is good as gold to me. So I said, okay, if he's, uh, if he's great, let's get him in this tournament and see what's what. I cannot possibly preview this one because I haven't seen him battle. Um, but obviously, I think JP is a monster. JP is a monster. I, I Yeah, I haven't seen. I don't disrespect the guy. So did he battle down at the jam with the man recently? No. 
That's not him. Okay, that was the other guy. That was uh, ja- that was Jack Weiler. Yeah. Okay, so I haven't seen Raphael then. Okay. Yeah. So uh, going to be interesting. Total wild card in that one, and then we close with another one of my favorite matchups in the first round. Paige Wesley. We've talked about her a lot against Camille Waters, uh, one of our favorite battlers from San Diego, has I come up. Mentioned as rookie of the year, I would say she had a yeah, she had a really really good year. She's had some really outstanding performances in San Diego and now in LA. She's done the belly room a couple times. And uh, always represents herself really well, but she's going up against a legend in the yeah, first dude. round. <laughs> yeah, my favorite. I mean, this is the favorite of the whole tournament for me. Uh, so, yeah, that's a three and a half joke over for me. This is very much like Duke versus Austin yeah, P type of vibes, yeah, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, so that's a, yeah. How many, how many jokes are they doing? Five or five? Three? Yeah, so that's a three and a half. Yeah, I mean, this, this is honestly one of those uh, things that I love about a tournament like this is like we could be discovering somebody brand new. Correct. Um, or this could be, you know, more classic uh, battles and a classic run from like a Paige Wesley or somebody like that. It's going to be great. Starts on January 18th. Really quick, give me a prediction for the finals. Uh, I would say, man, because that's a that, that right side is crazy. That's Putin Vidal, Evan Warner, Lexi, Kelsey, <laughs> Paige. Right side is tough, yeah. That's crazy, yeah. The left side, I feel like that's a little easier to, to maybe choose. And I would say, give me... Gosh, uh, give me Fatimi. Give me Fatimi mm-hmm. versus Paige Wesley. Fatimi versus Paige. That's the finals you're saying. I'll give that the finals, yeah. That's a that's a really good prediction. I could absolutely see that happening. I think Fatimi, I think Fatimi is somehow still underrated despite exactly. everything she's done. Yeah. Despite all the wins, despite winning the championship, despite doing all of that kind of stuff. I think she's underrated, and I think she's going to come into this with, uh, with a lot to prove. The tournament kicks off on January 18th. Uh, it'll be a monthly tournament running all the way through May, so we will be crowning a champion uh, you know, during the 2024 season. So. I'm excited, man. Thank you so much for doing Great this. Shit. Of course, man. Of course. Uh, I love this shit. I love uh, all the battlers who are putting in their time. Can't thank them enough, man. None of this is possible without these guys writing great jokes. And... Um, yeah, keep an eye out on our YouTube channel. The full Jam in the Van shows will be uh, coming up on our YouTube channel here. So uh, if Every you're not Thursday. already subscribed, what are you doing? Click that subscribe button. Every uh, Tuesday, new episodes of RBL Weekly. Every Thursday, new full shows, whether they're from the Belly Room at the Comedy Store, uh, the Mothership in Austin, Jam in the Van, uh, also out here in L.A. We're putting up content constantly. And by the way, we're constantly getting... Um, Shadow Band. Let's talk about it just real quick. Okay. Let's talk about it, right? Um, because this episode has already been, this is... Yeah, nobody's watching anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, no. let's talk about it. The reason we want you to click the subscribe button is because I have YouTube channels where it's like I never subscribe to them, but then like their shit pops up and it comes into my feed and I'm like, oh, right. And I go watch that. You're not going to be able to do that with us if my prediction is right. Because they see this content and it's it's questionable content. I get it. People are saying, you know, some... Fucked up things. Hate speech, fast shaming, misogyny, xenophobia, a little bit of racism. A little, little bit of that. We have all of that sprinkled in. In this episode in particular, there was shit about autistic people, you know, trans people, everything. Designer right? drugs, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if you want to keep seeing this, make sure you click the subscribe because my, my prediction is we're not going to be showing up in many feeds kind of going forward. So um, it's really important if you like the roasts, if you like the idea that you can still get up on stage and say some awful shit about somebody in the context of we're all friends and we all agreed to this. We're and, all consenting. Yeah, and it's 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 really, it holds a special place in my heart. It's a beautiful show to me. And I know we have a lot of fans that agree with that, um, but maybe some of them haven't hit that subscribe yet. Make sure you do that because they're not going to be showing you this stuff unless you're seeking it out. So um, subscribe, uh, you know, tell a friend, whatever you got to do. Um, and uh, stay tuned for the tournament coming up, the world championship coming up on January 31st. We got a lot of great stuff happening. So make sure you're, you're uh, keeping an eye on our YouTube here. You got anything else before we get out of here? Let's roast. Let's roast.